Once I ran to you, now I run from you. This tainted love you get it. I give you all I know to give you. Take my tears, and that's not nearly oh, tainted love. Tainted love. Tainted love. Tainted love. So today I'm going to be talking about, you guessed it, toxic relationships and red flags. And I know there's a lot out there already, but this came per request, so I am honoring that request. Some people might want to hear it from somebody else. So here we go. Buckle up, kiddos. Let's get started. My name is Keisha Martine, and I'm a licensed therapist. And if you're new to the channel, hi, and hola. On this channel, I do my very best to give you some concrete information, tools that you can use to work on yourself, educate yourself, all the things. And from time to time, I like to splash in just a little bit of humor <laughs> here and there. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, then make sure you subscribe to the channel and also hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. Right then. Moving on. <laughs> Toxic relationship. Hmm. Ew. Well. I'm gonna give you some signs today to look out for. Now keep in mind as I go through these things, it's not just about romantic relationships. This is definitely relevant to friendships, uh, work relationships, and family members. Now, from time to time, we're all guilty of doing these kinds of things, but the key here is consistency over time. So if you see the following signs consistently over time, then it's a clue that you don't need this person in your space. The first one being not respecting boundaries. If you say no, or you say, I'm uncomfortable with this, or maybe even that you've got other things you've got to tend to, you can't drop what you're doing in that moment to tend or deliver or be there for that person. That person doesn't respect it. That person pushes back, maybe even tries to manipulate you or guilt trip you into giving them what they want. They're constantly telling you that you're not enough, you're not doing enough, you're not available enough, all those things, or they complain that you're too busy, probably not a good sign all right a person needs to be respectful of your time and consider that you know it's not all about them and you've got other friends family members work responsibilities children all things so if you see that keep note all right if that continues to happen then you might want to distance yourself right there next one someone who complains about your shortcomings you gotta be you. You gotta be around people who love you and value you know, how you are and accept you for how you are. Obviously, we wanna have people that will call us out on our BS, for sure, but it can be done in a constructive way, in a loving way, and not in a critical way, and not in, oh my God, I can't believe you did that kind of way. Or what's wrong with you? If you feel insecure, if you feel stressed out, if you feel like you just can't be yourself, if you feel like you're normally bubbly and happy and really enjoying people and talking to people and all the things, but you're around this person, you might be reserved, quiet, maybe a bit down, then not a good sign. So you can guess what I'm gonna tell you. If that's the case and that's consistent over time, then this person is probably somebody you do not want in your space, okay? Another sign is if you find that you're trying to prove yourself to this person, prove who you are, prove your worth, all the things. A person that cares about you and loves you is gonna see that, they're gonna value that, they're gonna show you that they care. They're gonna see your heart, they're gonna see your efforts, and they're gonna value that, right? But a person who's toxic, perhaps even narcissistic, will not see that. And the reason why they don't see that is because of how they are internally, right? There's a lot of projection about their shame and the qualities they don't like about themselves onto other people. And they're also probably projecting their bad behavior or what they've done or what they think that other people do because that's something that they would do. And so that's another one you want to be very aware of when you're thinking about these red flags. Another one, self-doubt. If you're constantly doubting what you are, who you are, what you're doing, it's probably not a good sign due to a lot of gaslighting. Um, people saying that you did the thing that you didn't do or implying that you are a certain way that you know you're not over time that erodes your psyche over time that erodes how you feel about yourself uh, over time it does cause you to question yourself and you know what happens when that occurs is that you continue to do all the things and give and give and give because <clears throat> you're just unsure maybe they're right maybe i do need to do more maybe i shouldn't have done that or maybe 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 so that gives them power over you. You're giving your power over to someone if you're constantly doubting who you are, okay? And if you don't know who you are, you need to take a step back and figure that out, all right? Because you don't need to take on someone else's perception of you, 
all right? Especially if it's a toxic person because there's perceptions, all kinds of nuts anyway. So just keep that in mind, okay? Ooh, this is a big one. I know all of them are pretty big, but this one you need to look out for because it can become progressively worse over time and it could lead to physical abuse. Um, not, not to say the other ones don't, but this one is a pretty big flag that it could. Anger outbursts that are disproportionate to whatever event that upset that person. We all know what anger looks like when it's not dealt with in a healthy way. So that's definitely something you want to look out for, right? So a verbal tirade. It could be someone breaking things around you or screaming, a lengthy text message talking about how they wanted to reach across the counter and slap you in the face because of how you didn't say something nice to them. And if you find yourself like, oh yeah, maybe I did do that thing that upset them and so it's my fault that they had that anger outburst, uh, 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 uh. You are not responsible for another person's behavior, all right? If you do something that upsets someone, that person needs to be able to talk to you in a respectful and constructive way. Like, hey, that really hurt my feelings when you did that thing, all right? And you need to be able to reflect and apologize if you've done something that hurts someone. Oh man, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that I hurt you. Right? And try to steer clear of, I didn't mean to, or I didn't intend to, all right? We're all guilty of that, but we wanna really check that because we wanna take responsibility for our actions having hurt someone. However, if that person is throwing a tantrum and all the things, you know, you gotta make sure that you're not absorbing that and taking blame for that person's anger or how they're treating you. And basically what that reflects is that you deserve to be treated that way because that person's entitled for you to be all about them and to be super nice and sweet and all the things all the time. And that's not really fair to you. Now I've got many more for you. So stick around. You don't want to miss those. All right. But before I move on, if you have something you would like to add, or you know of signs that I've missed, then make sure you leave a comment down below. Okay. We can support each other in trying to heal from these past experiences or even current experiences. All right then. Next one, this one might seem pretty obvious to a lot of people, but for other people, not so much because maybe they're used to doing this based on their experience in childhood or maybe just who they are as people. And that's all take and no give. If you feel like this person is taking, 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 and you're giving, 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 and maybe that person is just seems entitled to receive those things or doesn't show appreciation or even maybe criticizes you when you don't do something the way they think that you need to do it. So they completely maybe dismiss all the things you are giving and expect more and more and more. Oftentimes what can happen and what's a signal to that is you become really drained. You know, you find yourself maybe walking on eggshells, you find yourself tense, you find yourself trying to anticipate what that person wants or needs because of maybe their outburst or how they talk to you or again, that criticism. So don't ignore that one because if you've got a big heart, you're going to feel really bad and you're going to try to give, 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 give more and more and more, just like I said previously. So pay attention. Which brings me to my next one is feeling exhausted around the person. You're tired, you've got brain fog, you just, you're anxious and that anxiety is just depleting your energy. That's another sign that this person is just sucking you dry and taking, taking, taking and nothing you do is good enough, right? You're constantly trying to do the thing and it's just not enough, right? And what's really interesting about it sometimes is that they will accuse you of that very thing right, of you being the draining one, of there's something being wrong with you and then they can't be around you for et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Or they try to address things and you just won't hear them, all the things, right? And that's again, oftentimes their skewed perception of who you are. So I would definitely encourage you to be very mindful of that one, right? Because when you're tired and you're in a brain fog and you're exhausted, it's gonna be that much more difficult to set those boundaries, to recognize what's happening to you and to be able to step back if you need to. And it leaves you very vulnerable to those dynamics. So pay attention how you feel, okay? If you don't find that you are yourself around this person, then that is not a good sign. Which brings me to my next one. Are you the best version of yourself? All right? I've mentioned this before in a past one. Okay, you've got to take a look in the mirror. If you find yourself arguing, if you find yourself being constantly defensive, or maybe you've even gotten snarky or snippy with that person, and that's not typically how you are, that's probably an indication that this person's toxic because that's how toxic works, right? It gets into your pores, it makes you sick, 
and then you begin to act sick, okay? So also another sign you have to be mindful of, all right? If you don't feel good about who you are around this person and you can look back and you can look at other relationships and be like, okay, yeah, I don't act this way with other people, then that's probably a clue that this person's toxic. And that is sometimes what can keep that dynamic going, right? Is that you want to prove to the person that you aren't the person that you are acting around this person, right? And then that just gives them more and more power to control you, make you anxious, all the things, and you just can't please them, okay? So take care of yourself, keep yourself safe, recognize these areas that are leaving you vulnerable to people that would harm you either intentionally or unintentionally, it doesn't matter. It's not healthy and that's what you have to be aware of. Okay, right then. Moving on. Before I go on to the last few that I have for you, if you're enjoying this content and you're finding it helpful, make sure you like it and subscribe to the channel right now. Okay, thanks. Another sign you need to look out for is someone who attempts to isolate you or maybe they already have. They try to keep you away from friends, family, even coworkers. They might be really possessive and controlling. They want you all to themselves. And they might even demonstrate some jealousy when you talk about other people or when you spend time with other people. This is a very dangerous one because if you don't have friends and family that you can talk to, you don't have support, you don't have anybody to share your experiences with, or maybe even to kind of challenge what's happening, that gives more power over to that person that's trying to keep you under their thumb. And one of the scary parts about that is you even begin to take on the perception of that person who's toxic or abusive. Um, because all you have is that person, right? And they're telling you all these things and you're believing it. And you don't have anybody around you to be like, hey, that's not okay, or you seem off, or you're right. Someone that could probably support you is not around. So that's one you definitely wanna look out for. Another sign to look out for is someone that tries to insert themselves into a conversation when you're talking to someone else. Um, they might step in between you and that other person, right? And act like that other person wasn't even there. Um, or pretend that they didn't see them, even though you know damn good well, it was obvious you were having a conversation. So basically that's another attempt at isolating you from other people, right? Because another person's gonna be like, what the hell, I don't like that, right? And then you might find that that other person is no longer talking to you because you're putting up with that and it makes them feel pretty bad that you would allow that to happen, right? And so it's important that you keep that in mind. You know, if, you, if you're talking to someone and that person inserts themselves, you need to like be like, Hey dude, you know, I was having a conversation, you need to back up. All right, now again, maybe people have been guilty of this from time to time, but if it's consistent over time, then you know, you need to check that. Here's another one you don't wanna miss. Okay, and let's say that you're not isolated and that you're still around your friends and family and you have healthy relationships with them and they say to you, I don't think that that person is okay. Or perhaps they notice some behaviors that you, they find are destructive or unhealthy. They might notice things that you don't, all right? If you've got people around you telling you these things and you wanna pay attention to it, don't dismiss it, okay? Reflect on your own. Obviously, I'm not saying absorb other people's opinions, but you know, if multiple people are saying this, you might want to pay attention. And if you want clarity on that, again, I'm going to suggest that you go talk to a therapist and say, hey, dude, this is what's happening. This is what I'm seeing in my relationship. And this is how I'm feeling in my relationship. And this is what other people are telling me. What's actually going on? You know, therapists might be able to give you some objectivity there, you know, because we know that our friends and family can't always do that. So that's where a therapist can come in and, and be like, okay, this is healthy, this is unhealthy, right? And they might be able to validate or confirm what your friends are saying or validate or confirm what you feel like is going on. So, something else to think about, okay? All right, next one. Oof. <laughs> Diminishing, minimizing, ignoring your achievements, your education, your career, ruining important dates, holidays, birthdays, graduations, um, just completely dismissive of it. They don't recognize it. They don't congratulate you. They just basically kind of brush it off like it doesn't even happen. And that's a really crappy feeling. You know, you would hope that the people around you and close to you would celebrate your efforts, your successes, all the things. And if this person doesn't, then that's a doo -doo red flag. All right. Now, why would they do something like that? There's probably a lot of reasons why someone would do that. But what matters is how does it make you feel? right? It probably doesn't feel very good, okay? You want that support. You need that support. You deserve that support, okay? So 
That's what you need to focus on. The why will probably come later after you've kind of healed and stepped back and all the things, but you know, getting stuck in the why, and I've said this before, getting stuck in the why keeps you stuck, stuck, stuck in the feeling or in the relationship, all right? So stop trying to figure them out and worry about how you're feeling and what you needed to move forward and to surround yourself with people who are supportive and loving and all the things that you deserve. Another one is someone who monopolizes uh, the conversation. Someone that somehow everything ends up turning back to them, their problems, what they're going through. Um, they seem to have something more difficult happening or whatever they're struggling with or whatever they have to talk about is more important than yours. There's no reciprocity in conversation. You don't feel heard. You feel like it's more about that person than it is about sharing experiences and supporting each other and all the things. Another one to look out for is contempt, all right? A lot of times people that have these characteristics um, think that others are just beneath them or they very judgy. Signs of contempt can be something like sarcasm, dismissal, unkind words, eye rolling, and that's oftentimes a sign of disrespect. Now again, this is consistent over time. We're all guilty of doing these things from time to time, but if you're finding this is consistent over time, it's probably not a good sign, right? And if you find that you're doing that around this person, then that's probably a signal too that you might need to take a step back. Another one to look out for is self-righteousness. Now again, this is not something that necessarily applies across the board, but consistently over time, do 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 do. Okay, self-righteousness, all right? Someone who believes that their beliefs are superior than others. Someone who holds, again, contempt for the perceptions of other people or their beliefs. Not a good sign, okay? Someone that's compassionate, empathetic, and considering of other people's perceptions are likely not going to be self-righteous and hold themselves on a pedestal and think that they're better than everybody else because they're gonna be able to see and empathize and all things. So, another thing to look out for. Another one is lack of follow-through and mixed messages. Um, they're not dependable in any kind of way. Maybe they are at the beginning and then things slowly start to shift. And so don't dismiss that one. Don't ignore it because over time you just get used to accepting less and less and less and getting scraps and it's just, it just doesn't feel good. All right. So look out for that one as well. Something else to look out for is if you catch yourself focusing way too much on how things were at the beginning, it's probably a red flag. Oftentimes with toxic dynamics, toxic people, difficult people, things are great in the beginning. It's all sunshine and rainbows and butterflies and this person just seems to fulfill a lot of things for you that you'd always wanted and it's so fantastic, okay? But then over time, you find yourself reminiscing about then rather than what's going on right now, right? If you're so focused on trying to get things back to the way they were, it's probably not a good sign. I'm not saying that that's the case for every situation because we all go through patches in our lives that are difficult. But if you find that this is cyclical, you go through stages where it's like a honeymoon phase, everything's good, then you have this big explosion and then it's back to the whole thing where you're trying to get things back and you try to do all the things to make it better just so you can have that person the way they were before, not a good sign. Think back about that if you're considering whether or not this is a toxic dynamic that you're in. Um, keep an eye out for these red flags. Guard your heart, guard your spirit, guard your mind, okay? Remember that no one is deserving of this kind of treatment. And if you find that that's the case in, in your situation, then you might want to get out of it. And if you need help doing that, talk to a therapist. There are a lot of good people out there that are well-educated in these kind of dynamics. Also read, 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 read. You can watch many videos on this as well. I highly recommend watching anything Dr. Romani does. Uh, narcissistic abuse, narcissistic patterns, all the things, all right? She's fantastic. She's got a great way of outlining things for you. So make sure you're educating yourself as much as possible. The more educated you are about these things, the more you can make sure that you're not vulnerable to these types. And it's unfortunate, but many, many, many times, People that have big hearts, they're kind and forgiving um, and empathetic, find themselves often having to deal with these kinds of people, right? And so if that sounds like something you go through, then you know what I'm saying, okay? Gotta take care of yourself, right? You can do it. 
Now I'm gonna also leave down in the description some links to some material that I think could be very helpful for you. It's free, don't worry, just click on the link and it'll bring you to a worksheet. And I'm hoping that that will give you some more education and some more information to help, you know, make sure that you're invulnerable to this type of nonsense that just seems to be everywhere. Right then, stay tuned for more videos on this topic in the future. And if you haven't already subscribed, then make sure you do so. Okay, right then. Until next time, be well, be strong, and be loved.